What's up guys? This is the uh, video tutorial for the big board. Uh, first video in what should be a short little series here. Uh, the first one is on the settings tab. So uh, when you first open up the board, this is what you should see. Um, this right now is set to pretty default settings. Um, and this is where you'll go in and start to input all of the uh, different configurations for your specific league. Um, one quick thing that you should know here is that uh, all of these different headings have little pop-ups that if you mouse over them, um, you'll see some additional details uh, that describe what each of the different um, settings do. So I'm not going to go through and read each of those. You can uh, do that on your time, but I'm just going to show kind of quickly how I would go through and get this set up for a league. So uh, first one is valuation system. Uh, you can see the post on my site that talks about how to value players goes into a little more detail on each of these systems. Um, I've got it set to standings gain points, uh, SGP right now, um, but you can also set it to Z-scores or points leagues. Um, Z-scores is the, the simplest one and probably the one that, that most people should go with unless you really know what you're doing. Um, I have it set to SGP right now just so that you can see um, when you get to your setting up your categories over here, um, if you have it set to SGP, uh, you'll have a column that'll show up here that shows uh, what SGP value you're using for each category in your scoring format. Um, same thing will happen if you switch it to points mode, there will be a column that shows up here and allows you to enter the points per category. Um, don't feel like you have to update all of them, obviously. You only have to update the ones that are uh, selected for your scoring system. Um, so just for simplicity, for not having to load in a new system, we'll leave it on SGP. Uh, mixed league, pretty standard. Uh, if you're doing an NL only or AL only, you can do that. Uh, you can also select custom. Um, and if you do that, then coming over here, so that's for, you know, people that play in weird formats, like, you know, sometimes I get emails from people that are playing in AL West only type leagues and things like that. Um, so you can go in and, and say, uh, you know, delete the athletics or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, hit pitch split. Again, this is something that I have a whole detail article on the site about how to set the hit pitch split. Normally what you want to do is set it in a way that replicates kind of what you expect your league mates to do, unless you have some personal strategy that you want to employ. Say if you're really good at picking up in season pitchers, um, or if you're planning to stream a lot, then you might want to spend more of your budget on hitters and move them up in the ranks. Um, and so then you could increase this number. And this is just deciding how much of the overall league value it's going to assign to hitters versus pitchers. Number of teams, pretty simple. 12 teams is the standard. Number of Otanis, unfortunately, a setting that I had to add because uh, sites like Yahoo list him separately as hitter versus pitcher Otani. Um, if you select one Otani, it'll combine both the hitting and the pitching stats into a single player. Auction draft, uh, it's set to no by default right now. If you switch it to yes, then you'll get some additional settings that show up here. Um, the site, uh, so right now it's on ESPN. The main thing that this does is it shows uh, different site rankings depending on what you select when you get to your big board tab. Um, and it'll also change the position eligibilities um, if you're playing in Yahoo because Yahoo has uh, a little bit different eligibility system. They're a little more lax with, with what positions players qualify for. Budget, again, you only care about this if you're in an auction league, 260 is the standard. Um, if you have a league where say like you specify a different budget for each team, maybe there's a way to gain or lose budget over the course of the season, um, you can do that later in the standings tab. Um, the value curve, I have a post that goes into more details on this. The value curve, uh, sets it up so that you can tweak how much money is spent on high-end players versus low-end players, right? So uh, some leagues are a little more aggressive with the high-end guys. Uh, if, say, the default projection says that Mike Trout is worth 40 bucks, um, but if he goes for 50 bucks in your league, um, then you might want to go in here, turn this on, and adjust this percentage, which is pretty arbitrary, but adjust this percentage until it matches kind of how money is normally spent in your league. Um, then finally, inflation. Um, if you've played in auction formats before, you're familiar with this. Basically, as money is spent, then there's less money left, right? Um, and so the amount of money that's left can uh, fluctuate throughout the draft and cause players to be worth more or less money. So if you turn this on, it'll automatically figure that out for you. 
lineup is pretty straightforward. Um, how many players are in the starting lineup um, for each team at each position. Um, the, the one trick with this is that I see a lot of people run into a mistake where they list reserve players as the bench. Some leagues have super deep reserves, especially like best ball leagues where you draft 40, 50 players. Um, if your number of bench slots is over, you know, over five, over 10, that is way too many and that's going to throw off your valuation. So typically uh, this lineup should mostly reflect the starting lineup, maybe the first few bench slots. You know, in a standard 25 player lineup, uh, there are three bench spots. That's fine to include those. That'll kind of help you even out your replacement levels a little bit. Um, but don't be, don't be including the, you know, 10, 15, 20 bench spots. Uh, those are really more reserves at that point once you have that many. Um, please read this link here that talks about authorization. Um, this is, you know, as a, a way to allow the scripts in the big board to run, uh, you need to follow the instructions here. Basically, when you click on this, any of these buttons, but let's just say we click on this one, um, you'll get a pop-up authorization required, continue through to that. Uh, you'll select your account, then it'll give you this scary pop-up. This is just to prevent people from say like sending you a script, somebody that you don't know, um, and, and having you run some script that goes in and like destroys your Google account. Um, so you have to hit advanced here, go to big board. It'll tell you what things it can do, which basically this is so that it can go and pull in the data from the external sources that I've set up to pull in new projections and new site rankings um, and, and display that all within your sheet. So it tells you that here, make sure you trust it. Yes. Uh, and then hit allow. Okay, so that's that. Um, now it's actually gonna try to run the update routine. That's gonna take some time, so I'm just gonna hit dismiss. Um, general note, when you are running those scripts, there tend to be little pop-ups down here that it'll tell you what it's doing. Um, and then you can also see a loading bar up at the top. So there's, whenever you see that little loading bar, Generally, you kind of want to wait until the board is done uh, running whatever it wants to run. Um, if you interrupt, uh, that can cause problems. Okay, uh, running through the rest of these quickly. So you have teams, enter all your team names here. If you're in a snake draft, you'll also be able to enter what pick each team has. Uh, enter your team at the top here, uh, just so that the board knows which team is yours. Um, projections. You have the option to use the custom projections tool if you want. By default, that is how it's set up. Um, so it'll show here, this is the ID of the sheet that it's pulling your projections from. Um, so I've actually got this one linked up to the, the master file. So if I click over to here, um, this is where my projections are coming from, right? We can check that the ID there matches the ID here. Um, and it also matches the ID in the URL right there. So all this is doing is just pulling this ID from there to there to show you what it is. Um, so we'll go into more detail on that later. Um, for now, that's what we've got. If you switch it to no, then it's just going to use steamer projections, which you know are fine um, if you're not looking to do anything too fancy. But the, the custom projections tool lets you do um, some nice things with altering player values on the fly if you want to. The categories, uh, pretty straightforward again. Uh, the bigs value is the sort of the catch-all stat that values players for you. So um, if you have a scoring category, um, you should check the box here that corresponds to that category. Um, and it'll calculate the player values from that. Uh, the punt value is if you say like batting average uh, is pretty random, right? And maybe you don't want to care about it or you want to see what player values would be if you didn't care about it, then you can just uh, select punt for that category um, and you'll have the option to, to show that value in your board as well. Um, the display is an option that people have asked for before. So we add that in this year where basically you can display other categories outside of the ones that are scoring categories. So say if you really wanted to see um, each player's OPS, then you could go in and check that um, and then it would show up in your main board, uh, but it wouldn't be a scoring category. 
uh, you can also uncheck, say like you have, you know, in points leagues, you have like 20 different scoring categories or whatever, but you don't care about looking at all of them. Uh, when you're doing your draft, you can also choose not to check those categories in the display column. So say if like, I didn't care to see average, I could uncheck that. Okay. Uh, total PA per team and total innings pitch per team. This is important for adjusting sort of the league wide baselines when you're in, uh, SGP mode. So um, this is for like a standard league. These are the default values. Uh, if you aren't sure how to adjust those, it gives you a sense over here under the replacement level section. So you can see that it's saying uh, based on the current replacement levels, the projected uh, plate appearances per team is about 8,700 and innings pitch per team is about 1,400. Um, so you could adjust these values to kind of reflect that. Um, if you have a good sense for the history of your league, you can also use the league history to kind of see what are the historic values for those um, and adjust that way. Replacement level is done automatically for you uh, in this column here. So this is the RL replacement level column. Um, and it also shows you what the maximum amount is. So this is based on the current player pool that you have and the position eligibilities, uh, what is the maximum amount of catchers in your player pool? It's 60. So you can't have a replacement level lower than that because that's how many players you have. Um, if you look at these replacement levels and you decide that you want to adjust them a little bit, you can use this override column. Um, you can see down here, there's a quick little uh, printout of the player values at say like, so the 13th catcher, is at negative $14. So every catcher is having $14 added to their value versus the 21st first baseman is negative $4. So all the first basemen are only having $4 added to their value. Uh, and I have an article that goes into more detail about how the replacement level works if you care to, to learn more about that. But generally for me, what I'm trying to do is adjust the catcher level to be what I think it's actually going to be. So in like a 12 team league, realistically, I think probably only 12 catchers are going to be rostered. Um, and then as far as the infield positions these days, I really treat all of the infield positions as about equal. Um, and so what that could mean is see like the way that it's automatically calculated shortstop here, it's not quite as deep as the other positions. So you might want to adjust that up by one. Um, that throws it off a little bit. So you could then increase the other positions as needed until they're all about the same. Um, so, I mean, something like this is actually starting to look more reasonable to me. Uh, once you have these set in a place where you're happy with, um, you hit apply this override. And so what that'll do is it'll take the replacement levels and adjust them from what it automatically calculated to your new values here. And then just keep in mind that once you've done that, uh, if you come back and you change these again, you got to hit apply override again uh, after doing those updates. Last two things here are the aging curve and the playing time bonus. Um, I won't go into too much detail on those, but uh, suffice to say on the aging curve, if you turn that on, you'll get a pop up here that allows you to apply weighted values of each progressive year over the next five years. So if you're in a keeper league and you really care about long-term value, you might want to say, I want to know what is the average player value over five years uh, with each year weighted equally. Or if you're in more of like a shallow keeper league, you might say like, I only care about the next three years. Um, let's weight the current year the most, uh, the second year a little bit less and the third year a little bit less. So like the default right now is like 30% of the value for the first year and then decreasing down to 10% in the fifth year. Then the last one, the playing time bonus, you know, this one, you want to be careful that you understand what this one is doing. Basically what it's doing is adding replacement level value to players that are projected for less than a full season of playing time. Um, and so that's less than hundred inning, 180 innings pitched and less than 600 plate appearances. Um, that can be helpful for if you are trying to draft like later in a draft, you're looking at platoon players um, or maybe potential in season call ups, um, especially for pitchers. I find it useful where like, I don't care that much that, uh, you know, let's say like Julio Tehran, for example, is going to throw 180 innings this year. I would really rather have a guy that's going to throw 120 innings and actually be good. So 
I might go in and add a, a bonus innings pitch towards the end of my draft. I might really pump it up to like 50 uh, bonus innings for for players. Um, the the per plate appearance and per inning bonus changes a lot depending on your league settings, and it also changes based on how many maximum plate appearances and innings you're adding. So anytime you update these settings, um, you'll see that these guys are red right now. You want to go in and hit this recalibrate button, and it's just going to iteratively go through and, okay, adjust the values, see how it changes things, adjust the values, see how it changes things until it reaches sort of a stable uh, value for those per plate appearance and per inning bonuses. The last thing that shows up on the settings is the uh, dialogue here for adding players. Um, the default player pool is pretty deep this year and I find that um, I haven't had any situations where I've had players that I need to add mid-draft um, even in a, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I think the deepest draft that I've done so far is a 30 team, uh, 15 team, 30 player draft. So that's pretty deep. But if you find guys that you need to add, um, there's two things you have to do. One is that you have to add a projection in order to actually include the player. So that would be in the uh, custom player projection tool. So we'll, we'll see that later. Um, and then the other thing you need to do is you need to add a position and an age for that player. Uh, age, mostly important if you care about the aging curve. Um, otherwise, the position will default to DH. Um, or relief pitcher. So you would just go in here, you would enter the player name, the age, and the position. So once you've done that, um, you can get a list of players in here. You can add a bunch of them at a time, then hit the add player button. It'll take a little, bit, a little bit of time, but it'll add those guys in. Okay, that's it for the settings page. Um, the last thing actually is uh, this import dialog down here. So this is something that I've been seeing people have trouble with, I think mostly from um, not uh, putting the right ID in this box here or from uh, not having their sheet publicly shared. And so um, it's not able to access the data from your old sheet to bring it into the new sheet because it's not publicly shared. So there's two ways to do that. Uh, one is that you can um, go into your old sheet, uh, go to this share button here, advanced, change who can access, and just make it public on the web by clicking that and hitting save. I'll just cancel out of that. The other way to do it is that if you pull in a an ID here, um, let, me, let me grab one for, so I can copy in an ID from another sheet right here. Um, I just pulled this up from another one that I have. Um, enter that in there. You're going to get this little pop-up here that says click the cell above and hit allow access. So if I mouse over that cell that's directly above it, you need to connect these sheets. I can hit allow access, then that'll take a minute to load. <clears throat> okay, and then it'll say connected. Once you see that connected, now you're good to go. You can hit import. Um, that should all complete successfully. One final note on the buttons up here. So you have the update data button and what that one's gonna do is uh, it will pull in updated ADP information, uh, site rankings, so like ESPN or Yahoo's default rankings, um, as well as CBS. Uh, it pulls in ADPs from a number of sources, so like Fantrax um, and NFBC as well. Um, and it will pull in the updated default projections. So again, if you have selected no under projections over there, it'll update your uh, steamer default projections. Um, if you wanna update your customized projections, remember you have to do that in your customized projections sheet. This button here uh, won't update that for you. Um, and then the big button, this is the important one. Make sure that you come back once you've finished everything else. You know, basically, I'm reading to you what it says here. Once you've finished everything else, hit this button. It'll go through the sheet and apply the different formatting that it needs for your specific league types. That means like hiding things that you don't need, showing the things that you do, um, making sure that all the right categories are displayed, all of that good stuff.